Hello, so I've got just an interesting uh, theory slash meta video for you. I'm not actually solving a puzzle, but it kind of is like solving a puzzle. Um, and it's actually pretty elegant, and I wanted to show this. So the context here is anti-knight in standard 6x6 Sudokus. Now, let me go over what all of that means. But anti-knight is a constraint that's very popular in 9x9 Sudokus, but you might find that it's a little bit less popular in 6x6, and this might explain why. Uh, it's extremely limited, and it's limited in an interesting way that's easy to remember and not that hard to prove, and that's what I'm going to do here. So once you know this meta, you'll be able to destroy any anti-knight puzzle that is in standard 6x6 with the standard boxes uh, without too much trouble. So I don't know if I'm cursing you with knowledge here, but uh, if you want to learn more, uh, just keep watching. So uh, first, let's go over what anti-knight means. Uh, in case you haven't encountered it before. So let's take this cell here. And this is just, I put the knight there just because it's a, just, this is just a fun playground. We're not going to be solving a puzzle here. Um, <coughs> at least not in the traditional sense. So whatever this cell is here that I've marked in green, think about how a chess knight moves. In fact, let me just move this down so there's room for it. A chess knight, if you're from not, if you're not familiar with chess, a knight can cap, can, can move, uh, in, in capture if it, hits a piece, but it can move such that it makes this L shape, where it goes one in one direction and two in another direction. So for example, to here. Or we could go one in this direction and two in this direction to here. There's eight places it can move. So it makes this kind of interesting uh, circular shape here on the, on the board. So from here, a chest knight would be able to move to any of these places. Notice these are the places that are one away in one direction and two away in another. One, two. Or you could go, um, you know, two, one, however you want to do that. Um, but it makes these L shapes. So that is how a knight moves. Now, anti-knight in Sudoku tells us that if we have a digit here, say there's a one here, then none of the purple cells, none of the cells that are knights move away can be the same digit. So here I do have the uh, conflict checking on for anti-knight in this puzzle, so you can uh, we can make use of that. So you can see that these turn red. Normal Sudoku would have absolutely no problem with both of these cells being one. That would be pretty common, actually. But with anti-knight, anti-knight is explicitly telling us, as an additional rule, that these two cannot be the same digit as each other. So I can't put a one here, I can't put a one here, or here, or here, or here, etc. Now this already couldn't have been a one because it shares a box, but it definitely can't be a one because of anti-knight. Same with here and here. Uh, they can't be ones because of anti-knight. So, that is anti-knight. Now, anti-knight, very popular in 9x9s. It is also quite restrictive. Uh, normally, a 9x9 classic Sudoku has um, something like 10 to the 23 possible solution grids, whereas anti-knight has only 11 million. So that is <laughs> that is an insane restriction. It's to the point that you can literally just have a file of every possible 9x9 solution. 6x6 is even more restricted. I don't remember the exact solution count. That's not important because I'm going to be showing you uh, an interesting meta. So uh, now we are going to talk about it. So let me let me tell you first what we're about to prove so you have context of what we're going for here. So if we were to, interestingly, if we were to checkerboard or maybe chessboard the board here, the grid here, I'm just going to make all of these just sort of uh, green here. So you can see that there's, there's cells that are on the same checkerboard color and there's cells that are on the other checkerboard color. So in 6x6 anti-knight with the standard boxes, what we are going to prove is that whatever digits end up in green, um, sorry, that, that the, di the six digits in the grid, one through six, are split into two halves, with three of the digits only going in the green cells and three of the digits only going in the white cells. So if, I, for example, I have one, two, three here, then as soon as I prove that one, two, three, four, five, six is like this in this box, I can just go to every single green cell and say it's one, two, three, and then every single uh, white cell and say it's four, five, six, just immediately. And so that's extremely helpful. And actually, I'm gonna at, at the end of this video, I'll pull up a, a Sudoku adventure, one of the older ones, and show you how that completely defeats the puzzle. <laughs> um, wasn't intended to be used in the puzzle, and so it just kind of defeats it pretty quickly. But um, yeah, anyway, so how do we prove this? Well, we can start with just a stack, and I can actually just prove this. Like, I'm actually going to use blue and orange here, and you'll you'll find out why. Actually, I'm going to use blue and orange the other way. You'll find out why in a second. Maybe you can guess. Um, so 
whatever these three digits are, whatever they end up being, we're going to call those blue. And whatever these three digits are, we're going to call those orange. So orange is a set of three digits. Blue is a set of three digits as they appear in this box like this, in this formation. So let's think about these three cells here. Let's do them one at a time. This cell. I'll make it purple. This cell cannot be this orange digit because it shares a column. Or sorry, it can't be this blue digit. Sorry, I'm not going to do orange. It can't be this blue digit because it shares a column. It can't be this blue digit because of anti-night, and it can't be this blue digit because of anti-night. So can this digit be blue? Well, the answer is no. If this digit was blue, it wouldn't be this blue digit, it wouldn't be this blue digit, it wouldn't be this blue digit. So there's no blue digits left for it to be. So it must be an orange digit. This cell here sees this blue digit by column and these two blue digits by anti-night. So it also can't be blue. And this cell here sees this blue sees this digit by column. Here, let me make it purple. It sees this digit by column, and it sees these two by anti-night. So it also cannot be blue. So that means all three of these are orange, leaving that's all three oranges for the box, leaving these to be blue. And then we just can literally repeat this for this box, right? These three cells all see all three blues, so they must be orange, and it makes these blue. So you can see once we've proven one box at the top here, um, once once we know the formation of the digits in, in the top box, we know the formation of the digits in the boxes below it. It just keeps propagating in this checkerboard pattern. So that's enough to prove that. Now, it doesn't extend over here. How would it extend over here, right? We got to get a little bit more creative there. And what I'm going to do is, without loss of generality, uh, as mathematicians would say, um, I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six here. We're just we're just naming these digits with, with anti night. It doesn't, it doesn't add any additional interaction between separate digits like non-consecutive would. So it's perfectly fine for us to just call these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can mix these up if you want. The proof will look exactly the same. What we're focused on is what digit is here and what digit is here mostly. So, But it doesn't really matter which is which. The, the proof will look the same. So without loss of generality, we are able to just fill 1 through 6 in this box and we can still prove it, prove the general case uh, via as a proxy. So I'm going to fill out what these uh, blue digits can be, right? These are limited to 4, 6, um, which means that the 2 is in one of these two and the 2 is in one of these two. That's really all we have to do there. And then for the orange cells, we know that these are 1, 3 because they can't be 5, which means the 5 is in one of these two and the 5 is in one of these two. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill 4, uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to fill 4, 5, 6 here and 1, 2, 3 here. And it does clean up by anti-night a bit. So this 5 sees here, this 6 sees here, this 2 sees here, this 3 sees here. So. Let's think about this though. So these fives, they point into this box, but these can't be five or we wouldn't have anywhere for five in this box. So five ends up down here. These twos point in, putting the two in one of these. And then similarly here, we get twos here and we get fives here. Now let's think about this. There's a two in one of these three cells. This cell here sees all three of them. It sees here by anti-night, it sees here by column, it sees here by anti-night. So if this cell was actually a two, then none of these three cells could be two. And in fact, nowhere in this box could be two because two has to be up here. So this can't actually be a two. Similarly here, this two would remove these twos. So this can't be a two. So the question is, where does two go in this column? And the answer is only right here. So this is actually a two and two is blue. And that makes these two orange. Finally, fives do the exact same thing. This center five can't actually be true. It removes five from all three of these. And it's, it's the same with this center five here. It removes five from these two. And so now where's five in this column? It must be here. So this is the orange five. So we are proving this generically, right? We are proving that whatever digits end up here must be over here in, over, in, in anti-night. Whatever this digit is, it goes exactly here. Whatever this digit is, goes exactly here, in addition to this checkerboard. And now look, this checkerboard pattern, it's going to propagate downwards. We proved how. But instead of propagating via the last time we propagated via the blues, we're going to propagate via the oranges because the oranges occupy these three. So these three cells here see all three oranges, meaning they must be blue, leaving these to be orange. And now we have these same exact pattern of oranges here. It's just going to keep propagating downwards. These are orange and these are blue. And there we go. We've proven the checkerboard. Um, and here I'm using blue for even and orange for odd, but basically um, and if you wanted to, you could fill out all the pencil marks here, and, and it doesn't really prove much more. 
Um, it's just kind of the basic Sudoku rules of what the pencil marks would be. And what's interesting about proving this checkerboard is once you've sort of figured out the checkerboard pattern, you can use that as a proxy for the anti-knight, a more powerful proxy, because you are never going to have a digit. If you think about it, anti-knight move, because it moves one in one direction and two in another, it's always going to change color. It changes the color of the knight. The knight always moves from black to white to black to white whenever it moves. And because of that, because you never have the same digits in different checkerboard colors, you can just ignore anti-knight now, as long as you and, and replace it as a proxy with the more powerful checkerboard rule that if a digit appears in one checkerboard color, it cannot appear in any other of the checkerboard colors. So that having a two here not only removes two from the direct anti-knights that it sees, it removes two from every single orange cell as soon as you place a two. So. Um, yeah, very, very powerful, but also trivializes most anti-knight puzzles, or I would say all 6x6 anti-knight puzzles are probably trivialized. Um, I'd be interested if someone has an exception. But um, yeah, the problem is you can't really create an anti-knight 6x6 puzzle with the assumption that someone knows this meta, and so it would be an extremely hard puzzle if someone doesn't know the meta, so it's kind of interesting. Um, and if you don't know to look for it, I don't know that you would come up with this on your own if you didn't already knew to work backwards, know to work backwards from that result. So anyway, let's um, let's actually do a puzzle now um, and uh, show you how powerful this is and how it might be used. Okay, so this is Sudoku Adventure 43, Amazon by Inferio. And uh, this was a puzzle early on in Sudoku Adventure, and it was considered quite difficult at the time. It's still it's still a pr pretty difficult puzzle. Uh, I, I've, I have it linked in the description if you want to give it a try yourself first uh, with or without the meta. Maybe try it without the meta, then see how it goes with the meta. But I'm going to walk you through how I think the meta of the checkerboard really helps solve this puzzle more cleanly. I mean, it's already a pretty clean solve. I'm not saying it wasn't a clean solve, but I'm saying it really just gets to the heart of the matter and lets you just solve it quickly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our checkerboard here. So I'm going to just use um, I'll just use green for this checkerboard, and then I will make these a gray color just to um, just so that I can highlight them all at once if I need to. Um, but um, so the way arrows work is digits on an arrow sum to the value in the circle. So the sum of these sums to here. So the minimum we could put here is one, two. The minimum here is one and one. So this would add to four plus three is five. So this is minimum five, six. And so there's one degree of freedom on here, meaning we can add one to any of these cells. We can't add more than one. If you try to put a three here, the minimum you'd get here is three plus one is four, plus another three is no good. That would be seven. So what do we know? Well, what we can learn from this is, first of all, because there's only one degree of freedom, these can't both be two. So since they can't both, they can't both be two, because that would be four plus three is seven, right? Which means there is definitely a one in one of these two cells, they are both in the green checkerboard, meaning there cannot be any ones in silver. So what is the minimum here? The minimum here is one, two, two, because if this were any, it, it, we can't put ones in the silver. So the minimum here would be three, four, five. So this is a five, six pair here. And then we have one degree of freedom, meaning we could do um, a two here, a three here, or a three here. Um, sorry, we know there's, did I do that backwards? No, I didn't. Yeah, we know there's a one in uh, green, but can this actually be a two? Because if this was a two, that means that green also has a two in it. And now this would be double three because we couldn't put a two in the silver checkerboard. So if this was a two, that means a green checkerboard has a two, meaning silver checkerboard doesn't. These are double three, and that would be too big. That would be eight. So this is actually a one. So we know there's a one already in the, the green checkerboard, but we know this ends up a one. Um, and so now we know that there has to be a two in the silver checkerboard. Uh, because if there wasn't a 2 in the silver checkerboard, this would be 1 plus 3, 3, which is 7. So if there's a 2 in silver, then there cannot be a 2 in green. So we can remove all these, placing the 1 and the 1. And so now this can't actually be a 3, because we would be 1 plus 1 plus 3, which is already 5. Oh no, I guess we could do 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. Okay, this can't. This is the one that can't be a 3. Sorry about that. This can't be a 3, because if this was a 3, it would be 3, 4, 5, and then we can't put a 1 here. So this is a one as well. So now we should be able to finish the ones. Um, yeah, there's a one here in this box. Remember, one can only be in green. So the one ends up here and here, and ones are done. Okay, so 
now we have this five six pair that means that five is in five or six are split up between green and silver so we do know that um it's not super helpful right now but i wanted to point that out um now this could be double two making this add to five or it could be a two three pair adding to six so there's definitely a two as i think as we pointed out in silver but what i'm going to do here is i'm going to actually just give this cell a color let's give it blue so whatever this two three is we're going to call that blue and where does that go in this box well it can only go in silver so it ends up here so now what we've proven is that these two are the same digit right because this digit if it ends up a two that then there's a two here if this is a three there's a three here because it that that digit can't go in green anymore so um the result and you can actually see that from anti-night as well this is actually the break into the puzzle, but it's a lot easier to see if you just use the checkerboard because the checkerboard is also just more powerful uh, than the anti-knight at this point. Like, remember when I told you, you don't actually, you can ignore the anti-knight once you have the checkerboard down. So these two are the same digit. And if they're the same digit, they can't both be three because if they were both three, this would be minimum two. This would add to six. One, two, three is six. And this would add to six, three plus three. So then these can't both be six. They share a column. So that means that then they have to be the same digit. That means they're both two. And so I can get rid of the blue here and we can actually say, well, that means this adds to five and this adds to this. This can't also add to five. It has to add to six, which puts a three here. And now it's just a simple matter of plonking the um, plonking the, the silvers and the greens. So uh, the silvers are two, three, six. Let's just start with that. So this has to be the three for the box. This can't be the six. So this is six and that's three. That places a three here. This has to be the six for the column and then this has to be the two for the column that puts the two here and the six here which then puts the three here and then this is six and two and that puts the two here and then this is uh six and three now we have all the silvers done and the the only digit that's missing is uh in the green is four so this is the four so this then has to be four and five this has to, we're just doing naked singles right this or, or hidden singles however you prefer this is four and five this is four and five this is our five, this is our four, this is our five, this is our four. And so, yeah, the, you still had to notice, you had still had to think about these two digits, but it's very easy then to prove that they have to be the same as each other um, using the checkerboard. Um, not so hard to prove using anti-knight either, but um, yeah, I thought that was I thought that was interesting. And so it it really does um, help considerably with anti-knight puzzles. I'm not gonna go through more examples, but um, if you want to find more 6x6 six six anti-knights, there may be a couple more in Adventure, and you can probably find some elsewhere. And um, yeah, so I thought you all might be interested in that pretty elegant proof of the checkerboard. So I feel like if you can prove it, you can use it. So if you're able to remember how to prove the 6x6 uh, six six checkerboard, then there's no reason you can't use it. Although you might then be trivializing the puzzle, so why do it? So it, it's just a matter of your preference, but... Um, I personally am not going to use it in my 6x6 anti-knight solves just because I feel like um, it's not really an intended feature uh, uh, to be using in these puzzles. But um, yeah, so let me know what you thought of this. Did you Do you like these sort of random theory videos? Because I, I, uh, I love doing those. Uh, I love thinking about theory like this. So do let me know if you want more along this vein. And of course, if you enjoyed this, why not leave a like, subscribe, and a kind comment below.